as soon as we started our descent, everywhere I could see was mud. Just absolutely mud. I, I haven't seen anything like this before. Um, there was just so much mud and it was just hard to imagine how people were dealing with it. But um, yeah, so it was pretty shocking actually. And it just continues to be so because in other disasters you see cleanup happening pretty quick. And although we see cleanup quick here too, it's, it just keeps oozing back into the streets and it's just more water and it just never seems to end. And you just wonder how people are gonna, gonna move forward. Both companion animals and backyard farm animals, such as sheep and goats, it, it, they've just been devastated. Thousands of lives have been lost. We're very fortunate to be here with a great group of organizations. Our partner here in our South America Emergency Relief Network is GAP, the Global Alliance for Animals and People. We've been here since the beginning. So the idea was that we wanted to um, find out what were the greatest needs in the community and we found out that there was there were um, emergency cases for sure. So we needed to set something up local where people can go and continue to go even after we leave where they can have their animals attended to by a veterinarian. Um, and the other thing is food and water. That's a, the highest need here because the, the area, the city and the surrounding area is essentially devastated in, in terms of forage and, and it's, it's difficult to get to get dog and cat food out to those areas too so we set up a program where we can provide that food and water to animals in need and to families in need and uh, also have that veterinary attention available through a hotline that we've opened up and is now armed the entire program is now armed by local people uh, everyone here has been incredibly polite and generous and so grateful for the support of IFOGAP and it's because of donations from people like you that make this kind of work happen. Uh, the tears of joy and gratitude when farmers and when pet owners are able to be reunited with their pets because our teams have been in the field assessing, analyzing, evaluating, and then rescuing these animals. This has just been uh, an amazing opportunity and one of, uh, one of the highlights of my career here working with IFA. We've seen such devastation here and it's really hard to imagine how families are going to just move forward and you know some of them have just had to leave their animals behind and some of them you know it's obvious that they love their animals and, and in one case a family had 150 and is now left with half of them. They lost all of their, their young animals on a farm and so it's been really sad hearing their stories and a lot of people have been lost too. Um, still lost, not found, some are confirmed dead and that's just such a huge impact on a relatively small community. But on the other side, it's been completely inspiring too to see people going through something like this, something of this magnitude, and, and they just keep moving forward. In one case, I don't think I'll ever forget it, that we went to this farm and, and they were digging a hole so that they could put mud into the hole to get the mud out of their house. It just kept oozing back out, and, but they all formed this chain of of like a line of people working and, and they were singing and they were laughing and they had the music and it was just so inspiring to me that you could go through so much pain and so much sadness and, and come out the other end just with that kind of a positive attitude so I, for me it just puts life in perspective that all these little things that I might get caught up about every day just to remember these kind of things and these kinds of people and, and be inspired and motivated by, by that.